let's say a young girl saying, Daddy, can I go out tonight with my boyfriend? Are you crazy? Oh, please. No, certainly not. Not a hope. Even from the very beginning, it's important that the staccato shouldn't be too short. It's a bit aggressive. Could it be a little bit more playful so that maybe that you actually use a little bit more of the arm and of the wrist and not just, not like a, like knocking on a door or something like that, but. And also feel this and then less, less. And then he does a legato. So all of these different things, even at the very beginning. And less. And singing more. And this phrasing is terribly, terribly important. That you actually think of the wrist going down, up, down, up, down, up. And that does it for you so that you float off. It's a shorthand, well, people don't know shorthand anymore, but um, in the olden days when you had shorthand and typing, the, the, the way composers expected you to do, phrase a certain way is if they phrased two notes of equal value together. The automatic thing was the first one was more and the second was shorter and softer. So, so when they wrote this phrasing, they expected it to be that way. So, and then staccato and then two notes of equal value phrased together. And then and again, and again, and again. Think if when you're playing this piece that you actually think of what is he trying to get at? So therefore, can you think of saying, oh really? You're kidding. Really? My God! So that it actually builds up into a sense of excitement. And then he asks, he puts a fermata on that, and then a short note. What are you going to do with that? Some people just go, it's boring, but I think, could it be almost like you're winking? <laughs> that could be, make it even funnier. So the whole phrase, and phrasing, down, up, down, up, down. You're kidding. Oh no. Oh really? Yes. And then he does the big chords again. Sort of. Wasn't that fun? Almost. You, you. If you're thinking of, I mean, depending on who I'm teaching. If I teach one person, I'll say it one way. Another way. Another person, another way. But to a young guy who likes football. He's getting closer. He's getting closer. He takes a shot. He gets a goal. And then, yay! <laughs> so that it really is exciting. This, this has to be very crisp, the finger work on that. I remember when I was about 15, uh, a guy who was much older showed me a trick on the piano to do it this way. And I thought, Oh, that's neat. Let me try that. And I couldn't do it at first. It's pulling the fingers and trying not to let the actual other fingers come back when you do the first finger. So the fourth finger comes back and the third finger is ready to go and the second finger is ready to go. And when you play the thumb, the fourth comes up to get ready on the next one. And I thought that was kind of fun. But when you, when you do... Some, that's exactly what you're doing. You're pulling the fingers like this. And then it's phrase. So really singing. So this one comes down. This goes up. The addition you get of any music is very important because you have to try and get as close to what the composer actually wrote as possible. Uh, in the 
late 19th century and early 20th century, there were all of these people who actually gave editions of the music in which they said, this is what I feel it should be. And that's fine, that's interesting. If you read the Schnabel edition of the Beethoven, it's fascinating. The fact that he apologised for the edition later on in his life because people were doing exactly what he said without actually realising why he said it is quite something you have to realise. So therefore, we, now we look for Urtext editions. And in Haydn, there are two basic ones. There's the Henley edition and there's the Wiener Urtext Ausgabe, the Vienna edition, which is Robbins Landon um, uh, edited. So it's interesting to look at these editions because they have different notes in it, different phrases and different uh, ties in it even, so that sometimes you actually are asked to play a note again and sometimes not. Um, I wish we could actually go back to actually having what Haydn wrote himself so we could have actually facsimiles of what he wrote so you could make up your own mind as it were about what was going on. In the Beethoven sonatas it's very good because we have the Alfred edition which uh, Stuart Gordon has edited in which he goes into the detail about all of the various or texts. Or text means original text. Now if there's only one original text why is it I have three different Henley editions that all from the 90s and the 80s and the 70s all with different notes in them. This, so how or is or? How original is that? So we have to actually decide for yourself. You look at everything, you go into what he actually writes according to the very best edition you can get and then you do that phrasing. So therefore this, this sometimes people put a legato over the whole thing. I think the, the phrasing that's in this, I'm using the Henley edition, is it makes it more lively. And then, when you do this, there's a, you've got to think of why does one go down and why does one go up? What was Haydn thinking of? It's, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm fine. I don't think so. You're looking very peaky. I'm worried about you. So that, or else you can think of, let's go out for fun. No, I'm tired. Oh, come on. No. So try and get these cups. We could go out. We can get an ice cream. We can get something else. And build up the excitement all the way through. And think very much, it's two different people. This is, I don't know, a guy saying to a girl, come on out. And she says, I don't know. I'm not going to say it should be slower, it should be a different sort of mood. <laughs> and then becoming more exciting. <laughs> and she finally says, okay. <laughs> and up in there he writes his Sforzando. Sforzandos are something that, that some people misinterpret as far as I'm concerned. Sforzandos, when you have FZ on a piece, the, the theory books always put that it's an accent. I think that's so, so simplistic and so stupid in a way, because depending on the place, uh, on the piece you're playing, it can mean a hundred thi different things. It, in the slow movement of a Beethoven sonata, it can be incredibly intense. In the last movement of, of in the first movement of Opus 111, the last sonata of Beethoven, it can be enormous. So therefore you have to decide who is the composer, what is the style, and how much do I do? Think of Sforzando as something very special. So in the context of what you're playing, make it very special, and then it's different. So... Everybody finds these thirds difficult. I find that if you actually split it up, so you think... That's easy enough, and then is not so bad either. So think, practice it with a lift, and then gradually make, stop and reposition the hand, and think the stop, and then less of a stop, and then only think the stop. Even when I'm playing the Liszt uh, Sonata, when the, these nasty octave passages that people always make a mess of. I think if you actually think of it in smaller sections then, and you practice it with the stops and then take out the stops, nobody hears the stops. You hear it now because I told you about it, but don't, it's not always there. 
and then, and then. He actually doesn't write a, a legato over the first one, even though many uh, editions put that in. I think it's better to do staccato. And to the think when you're trying to do these double thirds that a little bit of the wrist so that you can get the, the crispness. And then it comes out more easy. And, and end the phrase. The first one comes down. It starts the same thing and then it goes up. So do a little bit more when it goes up. And I like that. That is fully legato. And then it's a different phrasing. And then the left hand. Not too loud. Remember, this is Haydn. We don't want to make it sound like Bartok. It's really too much. So therefore, think. I'm constantly saying to students, think of the wrist going slightly sideways, because then you get a better sound rather than, it sounds a little bit like a karate job. Ah, yeah, boom. You know, you don't want that sort of a sound in, in the Haydn. And a little bit less. And then the legato, as we had in the right hand earlier on. And the right hand singing. And then it goes, and then it goes. So show the phrasing. And then it goes. It's going up all the time. So follow the contours of the music. Building up. Make sure that that G lasts to the F sharp. Some people do this uh, and they don't join the F sharp. Make sure that the G joins to the F, to the F sharp. And then fun. Bouncing around the piano. And then singing. And that at the end, I think is one of the, the again, a, a Haydn joke. So that if you think, he should be. But the A sharp makes it completely different. And then you have, in G major. And then staccato. I like the left hand here to be showing the, the, that there are two lines. So do that staccato and hold it on. And then, and then. And above that, you have this wonderful line in the right hand. This is tricky. Again. Try and make sure that the, the wrist goes up. Mm. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. It comes three times. Do it a little bit the first time. A little more. And even more. Ah. And then it sings with pedal. This is very important that you get two lines. Some editions tie that B. Some people ask you to play it again, so it's up to you which one do you prefer. I prefer tying it. And then not so loud on the C because they, if you separate the two lines by an octave, you hear them more clearly.
and so on. So let's hear the here. <laughs> Not so loud on the bottom. And then Sforzando special. And let the phrase finish. And then he does these spread chords, which helps if you actually flick your wrist sideways, sideways slightly. And here again, we have the finger work that we, I talked about. Same thing that you actually pull. And so on, so that you feel the fingers really working like that, not just going straight down, but flicking a little bit. And building up more. So that you build up all the way to there, to the five one in the new key of G major. That so it's the dominant of C major, which is what how we should end the exposition. And this is pure fun. If you could feel the wrist again, da dum ba dum ba dum bum, da dum da dum da dum. And then this staccato is actually quite tricky going up on the scale. That is certainly down, up, down, up, down. And then feel as though you're knocking on the door. Most people can do that very easily. So uh, try when you do that, knocking on the door with a closed fist. Open the hand slightly. And then do fingers with the same feeling. And then it's just literally knocking on the door. And then he does legato. So make it sound so completely different. So this is almost, are you okay? Or else? Like, let's say a young girl saying, Daddy, can I go out tonight with my boyfriend? Are you crazy? Oh, please. No, certainly not. Not a hope. So let it finish full of life. I mean, I'm, I can make up a hundred different ways of doing these phrases. Just so long as you feel sometimes that it's different people saying things. So they would say it a completely different way.